بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أب القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا وعلى سيدي ومولاي الإمام أبي عبد الله الحسين وعلى أهل بيته وأصحابه جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم في سورة البقرة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله وباليوم الآخر وما هم بمؤمنين يخادعون الله ورسوله وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون صدق الله العلي العظيم On the eve of Muharram 1442 I extend my condolences to the Muslim community worldwide to the followers of Islam the followers of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the Prophet is the one who has been stricken by the martyrdom and the murder of Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the 10th of Muharram year 61 in the land of Karbala, Iraq. We give our condolences to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to Imam Ali alayhi salam, to Lady Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, to our Imams and in particular the last Imam Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadar Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif May Allah hasten his return and his victory it, it is a season of sadness and mourning but at the same time it's a season of power and strength and inspiration and revival the revival of Islam the revival of the Holy Quran, the revival of the Sunnah. The Holy Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, this is the beginning of the Quran, the very beginning of the Quran. Verse number eight at the outset of the Quran stays, uh, states, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ among mankind, among people, among some Muslims who state, who say, Amanna billahi wa bil akhir. We did believe in God and in the last day. Wa ma hum Though they are not believers. They say we are Muslims, we believe in God, we believe in the hereafter, but God says they are not believers. That's in the beginning of this book. وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهِ They try to deceive God. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And they try to deceive the community of the believers. But in fact, وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ Though they deceive none but themselves, though they are unaware. This verse is very important, my friends. This verse tries to say that not every person who claims to be a believer in God is really a believer. According to this verse in the Quran, some of those who claim falsely that they are believers in God and the hereafter are not believers. They are hypocrites. They pretend pretend to be believers, but they are not. Of course, during the time of Bani Umayyah, when they were in charge in control of the affair of the Muslim community, a special sect was established and encouraged by the Umayyah dynasty, by Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan and other rulers. And that happened after the time of 
Uthman ibn Affan. And that tradition or sect is called or sect is called um, Al Murji'a. Al Murji'a group of theologians, mutakallimin, theologians, philosophers who believe that we should not judge any person as long as he or she says I'm a Muslim then we should not judge them even though they are wrongdoers even though they commit sins even though they commit crimes against Muslims cardinal crimes not minor cardinal such as murder genocide wrongdoings injustice oppression suppression still they are Muslims we should accept them and we defer them to God murji'a means irja deferral so they are the deferrers means only God will judge them on the day of judgment even if they are corrupt even if they are wrongdoers you should be okay with them you should accept them even if they are your leaders and rulers people who are in, on, in charge of your affairs, still you should accept them. But this is not right. According to the book, according to the Holy Quran, God says, وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَشْعُرُونَ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ They try to deceive, but in fact they are deceiving themselves. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ in their hearts, there is sickness, disease. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا And God increased them in their sickness. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ There is a severe punishment waiting for them. بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Because they are liars. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ If they are told, do not commit mischief in the land, do not commit injustice or oppression, in the land they perceive themselves as they are reformers they are good people they are bringing about reforms indeed they are the one who are mufsid corruptors and corrupt and people who commit mischief in the land though they are unaware and then the Quran goes on and on and on. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ قَالُوا أَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَهَا أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَهَا وَلَكِنْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So, God's, God speaks about the description and the characters of this group. One of the main examples of this group, my friends, are the dynasty of Umayyah, Umayyad dynasty. Banu Umayyah. This is almost the consensus of all transmitters of hadith, muhaddithin, all historians, theologians, scholars in Islam from both sides, both aisles, believe that a clear example of people who commit mischief in the land are the Umayyad dynasty. The Umayyad dynasty which is responsible, directly responsible for murdering Imam Hassan alayhi salam and Imam Hussein and after that Imam Ali Zain al-Abideen and Imam Muhammad al-Baqir. And they have a role also in murdering Imam Ali alayhi salam in collaboration with the Kharijites. So this is the group, a, a clear example of those that are mentioned in the beginning of Surat Al-Baqarah. Very few, only very few, very few historians believe that Bani Umayyah were good. They were pure. They were heroes of Islam. They were defenders of Islam. They did so much good to Islam and therefore we should praise them. 
We should acknowledge them. We should respect them. We should honor them. Among those, very, very few, is Al-Imam Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Taymiyyah who died in 728 Hijri in Damascus. This man, who is nicknamed by his followers, is a die-hard of Bani Umayyah. The first, probably in the history of Islam, the first defender of Bani Umayyah is this man, Ibn Taymiyyah. Let me show you what he says in his book. This is, he has a book which has four volumes called Minhaj as sunnah al-Nabawiyyah. This is his book. Okay. Tasneef Shaykh al-Islam, Abi al-Abbas, Taqiyya al-Din, Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Taymiyyah al-Harrani al-Dimishqi al-Hanbali al-Mutawaffa Sanat 728. Died 728 Hijri. This is his full title, full name. في نقض كلام الشيعة والقدرية. So he wrote four volumes refuting the opinions of the followers of the Prophet and his family. And this book is very polemic. I, in fact, I don't think we should waste time on rebuttaling his book because from A to Z, four volumes from A to Z, the entire book is fabrications against the family of the Prophet, against Imam Ali. Can you imagine someone who calls Fatima to Zahra, the daughter of the Prophet, he calls her a liar. He calls her a hypocrite. He calls Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet. Where is this? This is in volume two. This is volume two of his book. This is page 240. I'm reading from his book, page 240. When he speaks about Fatima, he says Fatima was not right to go to Abu Bakr and ask him about her right in the inheritance from her father, the Prophet. She had no right. Because Ab and when Abu Bakr denied her, Abu Bakr was implementing God's rules and the Prophet's law and then when Fatima when Fatima is annoyed that the Prophet did uh, Abu Bakr did not give her her right she has no right in that she made a mistake and then he adds he adds وَنَحْنُ نَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا يُحْكَى عَنْ فَاطِمَةً وَغَيْرِهَا مِنَ الصَّحَابَةً and he means in this context the Sahaba Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet, because Abbas stood with Fatima and with Imam Ali and they all went to Abu Bakr and they asked them about their share in the inheritance of the Prophet and Abu Bakr denied them as we're going to see in this book, in this book, in, in the book of, you know, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, the story is mentioned there. So he says, ما يحكى عن فاطمة وغيرها من الصحابة من القوادح كثير. She did lots of فاطمة عليه السلام. She did plenty كثير, plenty of wrongdoings. قوادح. منها كذب. Some of it he accuses فاطمة of telling lies. Can you imagine? فاطمة, the daughter of the prophet, telling lies. And Aisha. Bint Abi Bakr, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Mustadraku Sahihain. Mustadraku Sahihain, a book written by one of the transmitters of hadith and historians by the name of Al-Hakim Al Muhammad, Al-Hakim Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Al-Hakim in Naysabur, was born in Naysabur and died in Naysabur in 405 Hijri. In his book, Al Mustadrak al Sahihain, Mustadrak means when these uh, Bukhari and Muslim could not gather the entire uh, hadith, he came after them, almost 200 years after them, and he started gathering what was left over, what was missed by Bukhari and Muslim. 
So he collected that hadith and he puts it in his book, Al Mustadraku ala al Sahihain. An Aisha, innaha kanat, ida dakarat fatima, bintun nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Of course, he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qalat, ma raaytu ahadan kana asdaq lahjatan minha, illa an yakuna alladhi waladaha or waladaha. Aisha says, I have not seen someone more truthful than Lady Fatima other than her father, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala al-Hakim, al-Hakim Naysaburi said, Hadha hadithun sahihun ala sharti muslim. This is an authentic hadith. In another place, Aisha, she says, Ma ra'aytu, this is another book, Ithaf al-Khira, al-Khira, Ithaf al-Khira. Ma ra'aytu ahadan qat asdaqu min Fatima ghayru abiha wa kana baynahuma shay. Between Aisha and Fatima, there was some misunderstanding. So Aisha says to her husband, the Prophet, peace be upon him, faqalat, ya Rasulallah, salha fa innaha la takthib. Go and ask, Fatima, because Fatima does not lie. Fatima doesn't lie. This is what Aisha says. And this man, Ibn Taymiyyah says, Fatima is a liar. She lies. Not only that, he says Fatima is similar to the hypocrites because he brings the verse in the Quran, Surah At-Tawbah 58, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَلْمِزُكَ فِي الصَّدَقَاتِ فَإِنْ أُعْطُوا مِنْهَا رَضُوا وَإِنْ لَمْ يُعْطُوا مِنْهَا إِذَا هُمْ يَسْخَطُونَ God says to the Prophet, some of the hypocrites ask you to give them, you know, some bounties, some charities, some financial help. If you give them, they get satisfied. If you don't give them, they get dissatisfied with you. So he says, Fatima is like them. Because she came to Abu Bakr, she asked for her share. Abu Bakr denied her. She was unhappy with Abu Bakr. So he draws a comparison between the hypocrites during the time of the Prophet and Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. This is the book, Minhaj al-Sunnah. And this book is the most sacred book in Saudi Arabia with the Wahhabis, with the Salafis. The most sacred book, this book. And then he accuses Imam Ali alayhi salam in page 292. This is his book, 292. He accuses him of wrongdoing. What does he say? وَعَلِيٌّ أَيْضًا كَانَ بَاغِيًا ظَالِمًا Ali also was baghi. Baghi is aggressor. Zalima is wrongdoer. لَمَّا قَاتَلَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ عَلَىٰ إِمَارَتِهِ When he was fighting in the battle of Jamal, and Safin, Imam Ali is considered, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, a die-hard supporter of Bani Umayyah, he considers Imam Ali to be a wrongdoer, aggressor. وَبَدَأَهُمْ بِالْقِتَالِ وَصَالَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَسَفَكَ دِمَاءَ الْأُمَّةِ He murdered the, the, the souls of the Ummah, the community, بِغَيْرِ فَائِدَةِ with no benefit. لا في دينهم ولا في دنياهم. There was no benefit in Imam Ali fighting, you know, the Ummah, neither in the dunya nor in the akhirah. وكان السيف في خلافته مسلولا على أهل الملة. During his khilafa, Imam Ali only killed the Muslims. مكفوفا عن الكفار. He never killed any non-believer. Can you imagine? This is Ibn Taymiyyah. This is what he says in his book. Then he comes to the incident of Ashura. Let me show you how he defends Bani Umayyah. And he considers them to be heroes. First of all, he considers Yazid to be a legitimate caliph. And he is one of the successors, 12 successors of Prophet Muhammad. Because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, Al Khulafa'u min ba'di ithna ashar. So one of them, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, in volume number four. This is volume number four. 
This is Minhaj al-Sunnah. He considers Abu Yazid to be a legitimate caliph, but he does not consider Ali to be a legitimate caliph. Because according to him, Imam Ali was not accepted by many. They did not pay allegiance to him. Whereas Yazid was accepted and endorsed. وَصَارَ لَهُ عِزٌّ وَمَنَعَ مُعَاوِيَةٌ ثُمَّ تَوَلَّى مَنْ اجْتَمَعَ النَّاسُ عَلَيْهِ وَصَارَ لَهُ عِزٌّ وَمَنَعَةٌ مُعَاوِيَةٌ وَابْنُهُ يَزِيدٌ ثم عبد الملك وأولاده الأربعة وبينهم عمر بن عبد العزيز بعد ذلك حصل في دولة الإسلام من النقض ما هو باق إلى الآن فإن This is important This is his statement about Bani Umayya فإن Bani Umayya تولوا على جميع أرض الإسلام وكانت الدولة في زمانهم عزيزة Bani Umayya the Umayyad dynasty, they were in charge of the entire Muslim community, the entire Muslim countries. And the state and the government and the state of the Ummah during their time was strong. The Ummah was honorable, as we're going to see. Soon, inshallah, we're going to see how Islam was the most miserable religion during the time of Bani Umayyah, the most miserable religion. There was hunger, there was starvation, there was dictatorship, there was terrorism, there was bloodshed, there was disarray, there was confusion, there was wrongdoing, you name it. But he says, وَكَانَتِ الدَّوْلَةُ فِي زَمَنِهِمْ عزيزة وكانت الدولة في زمنهم عزيزة okay and then he comes and he says يزيد لم يقتل الحسين in page 278 لكنه هو لم يأمر بقتله يزيد did not order the murder of Imam Hussein ولم يظهر ولم يظهر الرضا به he was sad for the murder of Imam Hussein يزيد was sad for the murder of Imam Hussein okay ولن تصر ممن قتله ورأس الحسين حمل إلى قدام عبيد الله بن زياد وهو الذي ضربه بالقضيب على ثناياه وهو الذي ثبت في الصحيح وأما حمله إلى عند يزيد فباطل The head of Imam Hussein was not even taken to Yazid according to him it was taken to عبيد الله بن زياد in Kufa otherwise Yazid would respect Imam Hussein and love Imam Hussein and honor him and he would disagree with the murder of Imam Hussein. This is what he says. And there is a lot of, you know, nonsense really. A lot of nonsense in his book. I want you to, ju to judge this person. If you don't read his work, you would not believe what he said against the Prophet and the family of the Prophet and Imam Ali and Fatima al-Zahra and the rest of the Imams and how he praises their opponents. So those are very few historians, but the rest, 99% of the historians, Sunni historians, as well as Shia, they consider Bani Umayyah to be deviants and corrupt and deflectors, transgressors. By the way, by the way, let me show you something. He says, Fatima, there's, it's not right to say Fatima was angry with Abu Bakr and she has no right. But then, then he contradicts the Sahihain, Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Muslim and other, other books of authentic books in the Sunni tradition. Let me show you here. Let me show you this is, this is Mawsu'atul al-Hadith al-Sharif al-Kutub al-Sitta, Bukhari, Muslim, Tarmadi, Abi Dawood, Nasai, and Ibn Majah. Let's go with the first one. Asahu al kutubi ba'da kitabillah. Bukhari is considered the most authentic book in the Sunni tradition after the Book of God. Of course, we disagree with this statement that it is the most authentic book. Okay? It was written 180 years after the Prophet. It can't be authentic. When something is written 180 years, after the Prophet, impossible for it to be authentic. And when you gather the stories from left and right, east and west, north and south, 
from different people who have different political orientations, who have different interests in this life, private interests in this life. People during the time of the Prophet, all of them were not authentic. Come on. Why does the Quran speak about the hypocrites, munafiqoon? Why does he speak about them in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, Surah At-Tawbah, chapter 9, and many other chapters? And the first chapter, as you just heard me saying, Surah Al-Baqarah, if all people were immaculate, then why? Is this a lie when the Quran says there were bad people? Does God lie? Does the Quran lie? They don't lie. So we have to accept the fact there were good people and bad people. So Bukhari cannot collect all his hadiths, all of them from authentic sources. Definitely, I would say more than half of what he collected are not authentic. Probably over half. But listen to this. Bukhari says, Kitabu Fardil Khums. In the book of Khums, Bukhari has a book called Khums, Fardul Khums, Hadith number 3093. Fahajarat Fagadibat Fatimatu Bin I want our Sunni brothers and sisters to reflect on this. The daughter of the Prophet, where the Prophet in the same book, in the same book, in same in these books, speaks highly about Fatima. And as we read earlier, Aisha, Lady Aisha, says Fatima is the most truthful person after her father, Prophet Muhammad. When this lady Fatima dies and she's upset, she's angry with the first caliph. And according to Tirmidhi, Sunan at Tirmidhi, let me write, let me read this for you. Sunan at Tirmidhi says, An Abi Hurayrata anna Fatima taja'at. This is Sunan at Tirmidhi, Jami' at Tirmidhi. This is under the chapter if you want to search for it. Babu ma jaa fi ikhraj al yahudi wa nasara min jazirat al arab under that chapter hadith number 1609 an abi salama an abi huraira anna fatima taja'at aba bakr wa umar radiyallahu anhuma not just abu bakr both caliphs tas'alu miratha min rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam faqala sami'na rasulullah yaqul inni la uwarrith qalat wallahi لا أكلمكما أبدا فماتت ولا تكلمهما فاطمة died she said to both Abi Bakr and Umar I'm not going to talk to you anymore and died while she did not talk to them this is Jami al Tirmidhi there is a problem you can't sweep it under the carpet my friend yes we must live in harmony. Shias and Sunnis are brothers and sisters and friends and neighbors, and they must work together. We must work together. We must understand each other. We must respect each other. But what do you do with these facts? Do you bury them? You don't talk about them? What do you suggest? What should we do? I think we talk about them, but in respect, we respect. But we mention the facts. When we, we hide the facts, we become hypocrites because we become insecure. We don't want people to know what happened during the time of the Prophet. I think we must speak about them, but without cursing. We don't curse, but we mention the truth. Let people know the truth. Let people know what happened during the time of the Prophet and after the time of the Prophet. Let people know that there was a commotion, disagreement, conflict, sometimes fights 
among the companions of the Prophet. It's not good to lie and say, no, it was milk and honey. They were living together, enjoying their time together, friends of each other. This is not right, my friends. This is not right to distort the, the history. It's not right. What does the Quran say about Bani Umayyah? Quran, at least I have chosen, selected four verses of the Quran about Bani Umayyah. This is the most authentic source that we can trust and we can depend upon that tells us who are Bani Umayyah. Come to chapter 9, Surah at tawbah verse number 12. فَقَاتِلُوا أَئِمَّةَ الْكُفْرِ إِنَّهُمْ لَا أَيْمَانَ لَهُمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَنْتَهُونَ أَئِمَّةُ الْكُفْرِ Many commentators say Abu Sufyan is one of them. Abu Sufyan is one of them. A'immatul al-Kufr. The leader of Bani Umayyah tribe. Then we go to Surah Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim in verse 26 and 28. What does the Quran say? Quran say, وَمَثَلُ كَلِمَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ كَشَجَرَةٍ خَبِيثَةٍ the parable of a word which is evil, like a tree which was evil. This is a reference to Bani Umayyah according to the exegists, Mufassirin and Muhaddithin, the transmitters of Hadith, that Bani Umayyah is the evil tree. And then at 28, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ بَدَّلُوا نَعْمَةَ اللَّهِ كُفْرًا وَأَحَلُّوا قَوْمَهُمْ دَارَ الْبَوَارِ According to the Prophet, those are Banu Umayyah, wa Banu Al-Mukhira, wa Banu Makhzum. Those are the people who switched, who changed, who turned the blessings of their Lord into a curse. And then they led the community into destruction, total destruction, total division. وَأَحَلُّ قَوْمَهُمْ دَارَ الْبَوَارِ جَهَنَّمَ يَصْلَوْنَهَا وَبِئْسَ الْقَرَارِ This is the Qur'an. And then we come to the hadith of the Prophet regarding Bani Umayyah. أَخْرَجَ بْنُ أَبِي حَاتَمْ عَنْ يَعْلَ بْنَ مُرَّةِ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ رَأَيْتُ بَنِي أُمَيَّةَ عَلَى مَنَابِرَ الْأَرْضِ I saw in his dream, Bani Umayyah dominating the pulpits, the podiums, the media. وَسَيَمْلِكُونَكُمْ They're going to control you. فَتَجِدُونَهُمْ أَرْبَابَ سُوءُ You're going to see them. You're going to find them to be evil leaders. وَاهْتَمَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لِذَلِكَ The Prophet was sad for this. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهِ God sent verse number 17 in Surah Al-Isra. Shajar al-Mal'una wa ma ja'alna. Let me read it for you. This is Surah Al-Isra. Surah Al-Isra, verse number 60. Chapter 17, 60. Wa ma ja'alna al-ru'ya al-lati arainaka illa fitnatan lil-nas wa al-shajarata al-mal'una fi al-Qur'an wa nukhawifuhum fa ma yaziduhum illa tughyanan kabira. Shajar al-mal'una, the accursed tree in the book. God said to the Prophet, this is the accursed tree. A reference to Bani Umayyah. And last but not least, again Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hakim al-Nisaburi in his book, Mustadrak al-Sahihayn, an Abi Sa'id al-Khidri, radiyallahu anh, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, inna ahla bayti sayalquna min ba'di min ummati qatlan wa tashrida. My family are going to suffer after me from my community, my ummah, qatlan, murder, wa tashrida, diaspora. They're going to be everywhere. They're going to run as far as China, India, Pakistan, Africa, Persia. The family of the Prophet was dispersed in the land. The most people who hate us 
are Banu Umayyah, wa Banu Al-Mughira, wa Banu Mahzum. These are the verses of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet regarding Banu Umayyah. Imam Hussein stood for universal justice to rid mankind from evil. And he was right. And he was accurate. And he was following the path of his grandfather, Prophet Muhammad. And he was listening to this book, the instructions of this book, that we must fight corruption in the land, wherever it is. And we must be with the oppressed. وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ This is the theme of Ashura. Standing up for justice, for freedom, for dignity of mankind, not just the Muslim Ummah, mankind. Wassalamu alaikum.